Hello everyone, this is Dowser. Welcome back to another Dark Side of the Ring episode review. Today's episode focuses on the life of Bam Bam Bigelow, who many of you call the Beast from the East. Bam Bam Bigelow was a wrestler who had the tattoo on top of his head. In 2007, I remember hearing the news that he had passed away because of drugs. I don't know much about him other than Walmart releasing a glow-in-the-dark Funko Pop recently at their store and his flaming head tattoo. In this episode, we will learn more about him and who he was. Also, a lot of wrestlers died in 2007, I don't know if you guys remember, but those included Fabulous Moolah, Chris Benoit, and his wife Nancy, and Sherry Martle, Sensational Sherry. Also, I forgot to give my input of the previous episode of Abdullah the Butcher, but I give it a 6 out of 10 because it's kind of hard to believe who's telling the truth, but if you watch my Abdullah the Butcher episode review, you would know what I'm talking about. But anyway, on to the episode. I finished watching this episode and there is a lot of missing information as I noticed that Wikipedia had some that I feel could have been in this episode. But maybe the producers could not do a part 2 for budget reasons. I don't know. I'll start from Bam Bam's upbringing until his last days. In this episode, I'll call him Bam Bam or Scott throughout the video. When Bam Bam was young, he had hair and was in a lot of sports teams in high school, such as wrestling, arm wrestling, and football. While a teenager, Scott was very scary as one kid peed in his pants and refused to wrestle Scott, which allowed Scott to win the wrestling match against him at school. Bam Bam's real name was Scott Charles Bigelow, who was born on September 1, 1961. Scott wasn't afraid to drink alcohol with the boys. In the family, Scott was considered quiet amongst his older brothers. They would jump from billboards and into mattresses as kids. Scott got the nickname Beast from the East while growing up. He met his wife, Dana, in Ashbury Park, New Jersey, and got married on November 15, 1987. In this episode, we see his kids go through Scott's old notebook, and the day that he got married was written inside of it too. Another date that is in his notebook was the day he made his debut in WWF in 1987, which is now called WWE, in case you're wondering. In a Quack Quack Club, Diamond Dallas Page met Scott while Scott was drinking shots. DDP owned a club in Jersey at the time, next to the Stone Pope. Diamond Dallas Page was the one who brought Bam Bam to the wrestling scene, as Scott was trying to find himself. As a married man, he went to work the next day after getting married. But Scott was eager to be a father, and he eventually did as he had three kids. Being a father, Scott was very fatherly and playful towards his kids while in the ring. Bam Bam was violent and athletic with his work. Dana described Scott as a kind man as they started out as friends at first, but soon became a couple as they both did not go to college. At the age of 18 or 19, Scott was a bounty hunter. A person who pursues a criminal or fugitive in order to get a reward, as defined on Google.com. Scott and a partner went to Mexico in order to save a little girl, but sadly his partner was shot and killed while on the job. Unfortunately for Scott, he got sent to prison in Mexico for six months. The walls were made of clay, but Scott was able to break through. The jail had to have security guards watch over Bam Bam since he kept breaking the walls. But for some people, they thought it was all make-believe and not true. Not a lot of men are able to break the walls of their jail cell. Legend has it, as said in on this episode, that Bam Bam got an early release because he saved the judge from a gang shooting. Scott was considered a New Jersey legend, as some stories say that Scott saved kids from a house fire. Scott eventually went to a wrestling school called Monster Factory, owned by wrestler Larry Sharp. Larry became Scott's manager as Scott lived and breathed in the Monster Factory for a year as he trained and was able to do cartwheels even though he was a really big man. The name Bam Bam was inspired by the cartoon character in the Flintstones as Larry chose that name for Scott. Bam Bam got a head tattoo of flames in 1985, thus the character Bam Bam Bigelow was born. Paul Heyman, who a lot of us know now, Tribal Chief, got interested in Bam Bam Bigelow, covered stories because Paul used to work for a wrestling magazine, even though Bam Bam has not had his first match yet. Paul did cover Bam Bam's debut match eventually, and the audiences were in awe over how good he wrestled. Bam Bam's entrances evolved flames, as well as his wrestling outfits. 
He was a 400-pound man that could do cartwheels with no stress. Vince McMahon was very interested in getting Bam Bam in his wrestling promotion as there are rumors that Vince loved the big, muscly men. Bam Bam made his WWF debut in 1987 and proposed to Dana while the two were watching TV. He skipped the honeymoon because if you worked in WWF, you were on the road a lot for about 60 days or so at, a, at the time. Bam Bam did make time and spent his days off with his family as he had two boys and a girl. While in the WWF, Bam Bam received a monster push and had a match with Hulk Hogan, who at the time was a really big star in the 80s. It came really fast as Bam Bam was featured in the Nintendo games. He and DDP were tag team champions at one point. Other tall and big wrestlers in the WWF were not happy about Bam Bam's push, but when he faced Andre the Giant, Andre showed Bam Bam who the real men were as they considered Bam Bam a small guy to them. Bam Bam left WWF and went to a lot of wrestling promotions but settled in New Japan Pro Wrestling because in Japan they offered a ton of money for Bam Bam. He worked with Antonio Inoki as his manager and was able to wrestle two weeks in Japan and had another two weeks for a break. In 1992, Bam Bam returned to WWF and main invented WrestleMania 11 against Lawrence Taylor, a popular NFL player back in the day. The match was popularized to the general public and Bam Bam was looking forward to this match because he considered Lawrence an idol since Bam Bam used to play football. There were talks that WrestleMania 11 was considered one of the worst ones. But Bam Bam was able to carry Lawrence over, as said in an interview that he did a long time ago through a voice clip. In his second run with the WWF, Bam Bam got more popular as Vince brought back Bam Bam because their wrestling ratings were not doing so well. However, Bam Bam was dealing with a lot of injuries, but did not want to get surgery as he was WWF's top star. And if he were to get time off, he would be replaced by another wrestler instantly for the top spot and might not get another opportunity. Bam Bam went to a doctor and received painkillers so that he could continue to wrestle, but the painkillers would cause Bam Bam to sink into addiction slowly. He was diabetic, but Bam Bam was prescribed OxyContin if Bam Bam were to return the favor by giving the doctor autographs or tickets to the wrestling show. In 1995, Bam Bam leaves WWF again and goes to ECW who was run by Paul Heyman. His kids, however, were not happy about it as they thought that ECW was too violent. One of his kids, I think Scott, got punched in the face by an adult and went to the back to look for Bam Bam. Bam Bam sees the wound on his son's face and was able to locate the guy who punched his son's face. Taz said that when Bam Bam took the guy to the back, he beat the living crap out of the guy who punched his son. Pretty much sums up what ECW was all about in the old days, as the audience also participated in the shows in some violent ways. Taz was scheduled to wrestle Bam Bam for Taz's ECW belt, which was the main title. As Taz had Bam Bam in a chokehold during the match, Bam Bam then gives signal to Taz and they both go deep down at the bottom of the ring. Bam Bam tells Taz if he's okay as the two of them were down under, hearing the reaction of the audience, all surprised. Once they got back up, Bam Bam wins the title with a severely bleeding head. Bam Bam's injuries though were not looking so great, such as his spine, crushed discs, and parts of his body were fusing together. Dana said that this was the beginning of the end for Bam Bam, as he would later sink into addiction because of these harmful injuries. Taz said that Bam Bam ignored his injuries and pushed himself to continue to work. Once Bam Bam took the painkillers, his family saw a different, angrier side of him. Before the pills, Bam Bam was respectful towards his family. Bam Bam became very paranoid with the pills and took around 300 or so pills, but mostly OxyContin. Oxycontin is a strong type of opioid pain medication used to treat severe pain, but is legitimately prescribed. The doctor kept giving Bam Bam different prescriptions in order to help Bam Bam, but it was slowly killing him. 
Dana had her suspicions on Bam Bam's doctor and thinks the doctor was a drug dealer. After Richie was born, Bam Bam did the best he could to be around his newly born daughter at the time as he was going through pain in his body. He then started over consuming the drugs as he had taken 15 pills of Oxycontin a day. Bam Bam was forced to stay home throughout the rest of his wrestling contract with ECW because he became a liability to a company, such as showing up late or not showing up at all for work. One incident got Bam Bam arrested when he and his daughter Richie, who was a toddler at the time, were driving and Bam Bam was feeling drowsy as Richie said that his head was going up and down, trying to keep awake. She knew something was wrong and tried to stop her dad from driving by going to the bathroom at first. Once Bam Bam stopped at a diner, he got arrested and a cop took Richie to the police department where her mom Dana picked her up. It was the last time Richie saw her father. Bam Bam got charged for endangering his daughter, thus causing Dana to divorce him. Richie wrote a paper in the 8th grade about the day that she and her father were in the car as Bam Bam was nodding his head tiredly, not knowing that his addiction was taking over his body. Bam Bam refused help as he did not see anything wrong with him and got married to another woman in Florida. Shane went to Florida to visit his friends during spring break but thought about seeing his dad. He called to see if Bam Bam was there but his second wife answered and said that Bam Bam was not available. Bam Bam did return Shane's call, but Shane was angry and let out his frustrations with his dad, and sadly that was his last conversation with Bam Bam. Three weeks after their conversation, Bam Bam died. Shane felt numb when he got a call from one of his father's friends that Bam Bam was gone. Taz said that Bam Bam loved his family so much. DDP was rocked by Bam Bam's death as well and tears up a little while being interviewed about Bam Bam's sudden death. Bam Bam died on January 19, 2007 at the age of 45. He died of an accidental overdose, but Dana thinks the doctor overprescribed him. She did not grieve as Dana tried to be strong for her kids. Dana did not allow her kids to go see Bam Bam during his last days of life because he was struggling with addiction, which is understandable as a mom who wants to protect her kids from the harsh reality and to probably not remember their father as a bad drugged man. She no longer blames her husband for what he did but would call him a mother dot 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 which I guess is a part of the relationship as she was smiling during that part of the episode. Dana gave Bam Bam's rights and any incoming royalties to her kids. All his kids believe Bam Bam was a great wrestler since he was a big heavy man but did cartwheels with ease. Interviewers for this episode are Diamond Dallas Page, Taz, Dana Breckenridge, Bam Bam's first wife, Richie, Shane, and Scott Colton Bigelow, three of Bam Bam's kids, Shane Douglas, and Dave Meltzer. Before I share my thoughts, I wanted to share some more information that Dark Side of the Ring did not include in this episode. I feel like there were some things that were missing, and I looked and it turned out to be true. I think Vice probably ran out of time, but I did hear that they were going bankrupt a couple days ago, actually. Bam Bam did not graduate high school, but did receive varsity letters in football and wrestling. He had diabetes and was shot in the back while working as a bounty hunter. Bam Bam left WWF in 1988 because he had knee surgeries and he had heat with the other wrestlers in the locker room. While in NJPW, he was in WCW but left in 1989, came back but left again in 1990. He came back in 1998 and stayed until the last episode of WCW in 2001. Bam Bam was King of the Ring in 1993 and teamed up with Luna Vachon against Doink the Clown and his partner Dink. Bam Bam was in a Slim Jim commercial and was a member of the Screen Actors Guild. As a teenager, Bam Bam was in a youth correctional facility and got arrested for a lot of things. The story of him saving kids from a burning house caused Bam Bam to have second degree burns and he spent 10 days in the hospital. When Bam Bam had back surgeries, his height was reduced by 2 inches. That's gonna be painful. He opened a deli in Pennsylvania with a 2 pound burger called Beast Burger, but the deli eventually closed. Have you guys ever had the Beast Burger by the way? Not Mr. Beast, but the, the one that 
Bam Bam was selling. In, in 2005, Bam Bam and his second wife were critically injured after he crashed his Harley Davidson motorcycle on the Florida road. Bam Bam got a broken nose and several lacerations, while his second wife had several injuries. I heard that his second wife had a lot of blood, but she survived. So what are my thoughts in this episode? I learned about Bam Bam and how much athleticism he had. He seemed to be a really great dad as his kids were remembering him and going through Bam Bam's stuff in this episode. When it comes to the ring, it's all serious for him. I like the part where one of his sons was wearing Bam Bam's flame jacket. Even after everything, his kids still love him, which I thought is really sweet. I did feel bad for Bam Bam when wrestlers like Andre the Giant were being pushy and mean to him because he got a big push. Wrestlers and their ego. I think if he started wrestling today, Bam Bam would still be alive. During those days in, in WWF and now WWE, there must have been a lot of pressure to be the big star and surrounding oneself with drugs. Unfortunately, Bam Bam was one of them. It seemed like his case was kind of like when Michael Jackson was drugged to death by that one guy, Conrad Murray. Although I did hear a lot of conspiracy theories regarding that. When Chris Benoit died, WWE started taking their drug policy more seriously and I wish they could have back in the day because so many great wrestlers have died too early because of drugs. I wish we knew more about his family as the episode did say that he had a lot of brothers. I wonder how his family is or did they stop talking to him when Bam Bam started using drugs. I don't know, but I wish we found out about his parents and brothers, too. My condolences go out to Bam Bam's kids and Dana, as I think Bam Bam should be in the WWE Hall of Fame. I mean, they have Sonny in there, who might be in jail for the rest of her life for killing a man. I give it an 8 out of 10, as a lot of information was missing. I still want that Bam Bam Funko Pop, though. Thank you guys for watching, and thank you for all your support, really. I am really grateful. Like, I never expected so many views and likes. Thank you guys so much. You guys are the best. But I'll see you next time. Comment, like, subscribe. And until then, bye guys.